Good evening, everyone. Welcome tonight. Praise God. Come in with your host prepared to receive tonight. Uh, we just want to say to everyone, please, if you can, move as close to the front as uh, you can tonight. Uh, so that and those that are coming in late, we have seats in the back. But if you can, please just move as close to the front as you possibly can. I know you may be sitting in your favorite seat, and uh, we're just going to make you a little uncomfortable tonight. But uh, just move as close as you possibly can to the front. We'll appreciate it so very much. And we know that you're an obedient church because you're a part of Living the Word International. You just don't say it, but you do live the Word. I thank you so much. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, come on, give God some praise right now.
be a mother My everything When your mother lasts My everything Won't it be your father My everything When your father lasts My everything My everything My everything My everything My everything My little and a bad My bright morning star My God is. Put your hands together for God. Hallelujah. This young fella right here we call Young Blood. 17 years old on fire for the Lord. I didn't hear none of the stuff you were singing just now. So you know what that mean, right? My everything. My everything. My everything. My everything. My everything. What is to me? My everything. My everything. My everything. Let it rock with me. My everything. My everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all know what I need y'all to do right now. I know y'all know what I need y'all to do right now. Find you three, four people in your area and tell them say I love you whether you like it or not. Say I love you whether you like it or not. Say you don't have to like me. You don't have to speak to me. You don't have to like what I'm wearing. I love you anyway. seats. You may have your seats. Thank y'all for coming to service tonight. Amen. This is our first night of our men's conference. Amen. This is the night that we uh, we call family night. Amen. This is the night that we want to make sure that, that the whole family gets ministered to. So um, later on tonight in just a little while, you're going to hear from a great general of God in this area who I know has been anointed to speak into the lives of, of families. Amen? But before we do that, before you do that, is there anyone here and live in the world for the very first time? This is your very first time coming into the dorms. Amen? Just please stand for us if this is your very first time. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Lawrence. This is my lovely wife, Pastor Keita. 
we want to say thank you for being with us tonight. We pray that you will have an awesome worship experience with us. We know that you listen to the Holy Spirit who told you to come because you could have been anywhere doing anything. But the Lord said, I want you to be here at this time. Amen. So we pray that on this night that something's going to be said and poured into your heart that's going to just elevate your faith. Amen. Now, we want you to know because you came to those doors, we already consider you to be a part of this family. Amen. But if the Lord should put it on your heart, we don't force you to do it. There's a, get, a connect card in the seat in front of you. You could connect as a friend, as a member, any way you want to. We would love to have you connect with us. But if not, you're already part of this family. Amen. So everybody around them, what I need y'all to do, just go up to them, just love on them, and just thank them. And let us welcome them the way that we know how. Amen. <laughs> couple of our dear friends with us tonight, amen, um, gifts of the ministry of the gospel. So we're going to start over here from our right, your left to your right, and we're going to start from this side. We have with us Pastor Sharks, amen, for Agape Dominion, amen. We have our dear friends, Pastor Norman and Minister Fav in our house with us tonight. We got Bishop Reed, Lady Tina in the house with us tonight. Powerhouse. Amen. Then over there, we got our sons and daughters in ministry. We got Pastor Maurice Bro, all the way from Houston. Amen. We got Pastor Rennell and Lady Everell, right here at Living the Word International. And we got all the way now from Maryland. Amen. From Maryland, we got Pastor Allen and the Pastor Adarian Thompson in the house. Come on, let's give God praise for the gifts in the house. And as I said, you will hear an introduction of him later. But we, we just want to give honor to whom honors do. Uh, I was telling him in the back why, why he's never officially been my pastor. I have watched him since 1995. And how many of y'all know that it's an honor when you can watch somebody, study somebody, pay attention to somebody for over 25, nearly 30 years, and you never hear their name in a scandal, you never hear a bad word about them, you never hear anything concerning their lives that will make you question who they are. So can we put our hands together for tonight's speaker, Pastor Fred Luther from Franklin Avenue Baptist Church. All right, all right. You know they got to give me this thing I got to follow. Amen. Are we ready for our announcements? Let us receive our announcements. And after that, we want to bless some people with some door blessings. Amen. Today is a day of celebration, a day to honor the men who've shaped us, led us, and walked us through life. It's a day to say thanks to all the dads for all the times your strength held us up and the moments your wisdom lit our path for encouraging us to seek God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our strength for living your life as an example of what a man of God should be. Thank you for the discipline we deserved and the grace we did not, for the memories we treasure and the lessons we cherish. Today, we thank God 
for all the ways you've shaped our lives. We love you, Dad. Family Day in the Park. Family Day in the Park is this Saturday, June 17th from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. at Fritchie Park. It will be a great time of food, fun, and fellowship where you can connect with your church family. There will be water activities for the kids, so don't forget their swim clothes and towels. Girls need to wear one-piece bathing suits with shorts. We also will have cabbage ball, dominoes, and more for the adults. We will wear our Family Fest t-shirts, so stop by the hospitality desk in the vestibule to pick up your t-shirts. We do have extra if you still need to buy one. $15 for adults and $10 for youth. Feel free to bring your beach umbrella, a pop-up tent, and a folding chair, but come out and have a great time. Men of Faith Retreat. The Men of Faith Retreat is August 3rd through the 5th in Ocoee, Tennessee. The cost is $475 with bus transportation or $325 if traveling by personal vehicle. If you plan to attend, the final payment is due Friday, June 30th. To make your payment, stop by the hospitality desk. If you're paying by check, make your check out to Household of Faith. PushPay. For those who wish to give electronically, PushPay has been set up to make it more convenient for you to give. Through PushPay, you can pay your tithes, give an offering, or sow a seed right from your mobile device, cell phone, or computer. PushPay is a secure online giving platform that allows you to give at any time or to set up recurring offerings. If you wish to use PushPay online giving, please visit our website at ltwi.org or text GIVE to 833-921-6450. Thank you. Thank you to everyone that has joined us for this year's Mighty Men of the Word Men's Conference. The theme for this year's conference is Raising the Standard. Our prayer is that men will elevate to God's preordained purpose for their lives and others will see the change and desire to know Christ for themselves. Hallelujah. All right, now y'all got to help me out with something. When they did the Father's Day video, and the video ended, y'all was like, all it showed was W-O-W. -W. And this is a men's conference. Now, brothers, I know y'all ain't gonna let them outdo us. So, mighty men sound off. Many play, sir. Mighty men sound off. Many play, sir. Mighty men sound off. Many play, sir. Now, look at it later and see you sitting now. Now. Hallelujah. I'm like, ain't no way in the world they gonna come in here and outshout us at our own men's conference. Amen? But how many of y'all know that it's a blessing to be a blessing? Amen? 
How many of y'all know we are blessed to be a blessing? So at this time, um, you can get your tickets out. And all those that are helping me with the door, these door prizes, would y'all please come forward? Amen. Now here on Family Night, we always take care of our ladies because y'all y'all are so special. Do y'all know? Hold, hold on, let's just break it down a little bit. Ladies, do y'all know how special you really are? Huh? Do you really know? Just in case you didn't know, you can find out by reading Genesis chapter 2. That when God decided to make you, he put the man to sleep. He said, I don't want you to have nothing to do with him. Then he formed him. And she was so special, he didn't assign it to an angel. He didn't send her to the man. God says she's so special, I'm going to hand deliver her myself. Are y'all with me? And for all the ladies that are married and those that desire to be married, if you really want to know how special you are to that man, out of all of the billions, not millions, of women on the planet, God chose you just for him. Amen. So, brothers, let's give it up for the ladies in the house. Amen. 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 All right. So, our first gift, we want to bless the ladies. Um, with the young girls, if there are any young girls in here, would you get your tickets out? We have a gift, I believe, is a $25 gift card. Amen. And, um, so, we're going to just call the last three numbers. 004. 004. It's for the young girls. All right. Going once. Going twice. Going. Because here it is. You're going to get a blessing. It's not my ministry. You have to say something. Amen. Amen. Here's the next last three numbers. 021. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hold up, hold up, hold up. We got to teach you. We got to teach you. We got to teach you. This is not the beauty pageant where you, you just got blessed of the Lord. So don't you give God praise. Shout hallelujah, do something. Huh? Huh? Hallelujah. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. All right, for our young boys, our young boys, this is for the team boys. Ticket number 002. 002. That's you. Oh, look at him. <laughs> Lord has blessed you with a polo wife, sir. Amen. Amen. Now, for the for the ladies. Where all the ladies at? Would you pull it out the bag for me? Did we know we would like to be your best friends, but we know that diamonds is the lady's best friend, amen? So we have a diamond pendant here with the card to let you know that it's real, amen? Hallelujah. So ladies, get your tickets out. <laughs> they up here helping it and they're talking to each other. You got your ticket out? You got your <laughs> All right. Come, come pull it, man. I don't want to buy, think I put somebody number since I looked in there. All right, sir. Y'all ready? One, three, six. <laughs> what you say? Remind you what? What did you say? Amen. 
She said, you was calling them numbers. You remind me when I used to be at bingo. You called one, I said, go get me a three. <laughs> go get that six, man. Go get that six. <laughs> Amen. I had a couple of more gifts for the brothers. Amen. The first gift is going to be a fifty dollar Visa gift card that goes to number two zero four. Right here, that's what I'm talking about, brother. Now y'all know it's an auto system. I don't even be checking tickets. I just give it to them. Amen. Amen. Yeah, the orange tickets. And the next ticket. And this is a hundred dollar gift card. Two, two, four. You gotta say something, can't hear you. <laughs> Amen. And we know the brothers, we like the, the bling. So we want to bless a brother with an Evictor watch. Amen. So if you have your tickets, she pointed at her husband. Come on, pick this ticket, man. <laughs> pick it, baby. John go pick his own ticket. Ticket one. Nine, seven. I don't hear no noise. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for all our door blessing recipients. Amen. Now, y'all know how we operate here at the church. We were always, it's, better, it's blessed to give than to receive. So right now that we bless everybody, it's time to bless the Lord. Amen. What time is it? What time is it? This is your opportunity for prosperity. Let the Lord, one, if you're a member of this church, if you need to tithe, we ask that you pay your tithe. If you're visiting or whatever, we ask that you just obey the voice of God and whatever God tells you to do. Amen. Amen. We don't tell anybody what to do. But we do believe that you, we would trust God that you are going to trust God. Amen? Hallelujah. Anybody had a good day today? Uh, anybody had a great day today? Right, let me see if you know the word. Anybody had a bad day today? That's right. There are no good there are no bad days in God. It's just good days when bad stuff happens. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Bishop, my friend, I miss you, man. Amen, 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 amen. Anybody need to know how to spell a million? Amen. Who wants to give a million dollar offering one day? Who would like to be able to do it soon? Amen, amen, amen. Keep the faith, keep the faith, keep the faith. Holding your tithe, holding your offering in the air. If you're doing it by, by, digital, by online or whatever, you can hold that up in the air. And repeat after me. Let's do a declaration over. Say, Lord, this is my tithe. This is my offering. These are the seeds I sow. I believe that every word is inspired by you in my Bible. Therefore, I have a right to name the seed, command this seed to go, to grow, and to come back to me 100-fold because I give it in obedience. I give it in love. I give it sacrificially, and I give it to advance your kingdom. Now, if you believe, like I believe, that you got crazy, cheeky faith, and I do too, you believe you already got what you're believing for. Wave in the air, say, I already got it. In Jesus' name, amen. The buckets on the middle aisle to the outside aisles, the walls, please turn them on the inside. And here it is. Y'all know how it goes here. If you're on the end of the row, you got to celebrate the seed for the whole row. You have to celebrate the seed for the whole row. And look at that person. If they cannot celebrate your seed, Tell them to get off your row. Amen. Amen.
God, decree that over yourself. Somebody to prophesy over yourself. How you living? Hallelujah. If you know you're already living in the overflow, shout, I'm living in the overflow. this time, we're going to receive a video introduction of our speaker, followed by our men's team in worship, and then the next voice you will hear after worship will be our speaker for tonight. Amen? So let's turn our attention to the screen. Tonight's conference speaker is Pastor Fred Luter. In September 1986, with 65 faithful members, Fred Luter Jr. was elected as pastor of Franklin Avenue Baptist Church. He has been married to his prime rib, Elizabeth Luter, since 1980. They are the proud parents of one daughter, Kimberly Luter Terrell, one son, Pastor Fred Chip Luter III, son-in-law, Howard Terrell, daughter-in-law, Jasmine Luter, and grandparents of one grandson, Fred Luter IV, and two granddaughters, Zoe Grace and Gabrielle Luter. In June 2012, Pastor Luter's passion for the people of God, commitment to his family, and his love for God's word led him to be the first African-American unanimously elected as president of the Southern Baptist Convention. Under Pastor Luter's exemplary leadership, Franklin Avenue has grown to over 7,000 members, and in December 2018, the congregation moved into a brand new 3,500-seat sanctuary. Many have referred to him as a man after God's own heart that is known for his humility, powerful, and lively preaching style. One of Pastor Luter's famous sayings at Franklin Avenue Baptist Church is, it's not about the pastor, it's all about the master. The next voice you will hear after worship will be tonight's speaker, Pastor Fred Luter Jr. Come on church family. It's worship time. Please stand on your feet. Let's honor God for who he is, what he does for us. Take some time in your own space to raise your hands and talk to God. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how good he's been to you. Tell him anything that's on your
just want to praise you and Lord. Come on, somebody say thank the Lord. Let's give it up for our brothers. Let's give it up for our brothers. Amen. Let's give it up for the band. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. You may be seated in the presence of, of the Lord. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Amen. Amen. Giving obedience to God, my Father, Jesus Christ. 
who is the Lord and Savior of my life. Uh, my friend and brother beloved, your pastor, Pastor Weathersby, thank you, sir, for this incredible privilege you've given me to be here at Living the Word International. Man, I have been a fan of you and a fan of this church uh, for a long time, man. I always heard great things about you, but he's, you know, we're from the Lord Nine, amen, that weather be family, so there's got to be a connection there. But man, thank you. Your, your friendship through the years have meant so much, man. I thank God for what God has done in your life to, uh, to start this ministry, God, and see what God has done in your life, man. Thank God for you. I honor you and give God the praise for you. Let's give it up for your pastor, Pastor Weathersby. Amen, amen, amen. Now stay on your feet. We know he couldn't do it without the beautiful lady on his right, Pastor Keita. Amen, 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 amen. I thank God for them. Uh, with, with, every now and then we see each other at the airport in an airplane. Amen. We're going somewhere, but I thank God for this wonderful privilege to all the ministers of the gospel, the men and women of the gospel. Appreciate each and every one of you. To all the members and the guests of this uh, conference, I'm indeed delighted and excited because I have been invited to be here with you uh, on tonight. I have eagerly, eagerly been anticipating this was ever since I got the call. I, I had to, when he passed, called me, I had to call him back. I said, you you sure you're asking me to come here? I said, you didn't get it confused with somebody. I said, no, no. And I'm, I mean, I'm honestly, I have been waiting uh, to get here. I've been here once or twice for a funeral. I've had beautiful building, beautiful facility, and I've heard so much about the power. This men's conference, and tonight he's telling Mr. Pastor's conference, and I just thank the Lord for all that God has done. Pony. Did they, did they call you Pony or they call you Brother Walters? Walters. Because we went to Clark together, man. And just as he's surprised to see me preaching, I'm surprised to see him in church. And that's all I'm going to say about that point. That's all I'm going to say. We're going to keep it clean, Brother Walters. Amen. All right. God bless you. Good to see you, Doc. He thought he was a great friend. He was one of our star basketball players back in the day, man. Oh, yeah, Pony had... Pony had it going, man. He really, really did. It's good to see you. Some more familiar guests of the Cos family and others that are uh, here tonight. It's an absolute joy and a privilege to be here at this uh, men's conference tonight on Family Night. Uh, before I give you my text, I just need to be real honest about uh, uh, how I feel being here tonight. It's like uh, it's kind of good news and bad news. It's um, it's good news that I'm here, but bad news, uh, you know. I, first time here so I don't know what to expect you know uh, and so it's kind of like the lady who's uh, always the bridesmaid never the bride she was always in somebody's wedding never the bride herself then one day pastor the guy proposed to her and she uh, got mad she ran into one of her high school friends in the mall one day she said girl I've got some good news I said what I finally got married she said oh that's great that's wonderful I told you God was going to bless you but I got some bad news got some bad news child he is ugly she said, well, I got some good news. I got some good news. So I said, child, he's rich. She said, oh, that's wonderful. That's great. I told you some great things. I said, I got some bad news. Got some bad news. He is stingy. She said, but I've, I've got some good news. I've got some good news. So what? Child, he built me a mansion. She said, oh, that's great. That's wonderful. But I've got some bad news. The mansion caught on fire. She said, but I really, really got some good news after that. Say, what is it? Say, child, he was in it when it caught on fire. Uh, Pastor Keith, I think the ladies enjoyed that just a little bit too. Look at she clapping. Look at she didn't put a clap on that. The man got killed in the house. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me tonight to the Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 24. This is family night, and um, I believe in the family, your pastors, why right? believe in family. And as you know, I, don't, I know I'm preaching to the choir, the enemy is attacking families all over the country. He's attacking families all over our state, all over our cities. He's attacking families at Franklin Avenue Baptist Church. He's attacking families that live in the world international. We live in the world international. Because the enemy knows that if he can get to the family, he can get to the church 
because the church is made up of families. So tonight I want to share a word with you that I trust and pray will be a blessing to you tonight on this family night. Very familiar passage of scripture, Joshua chapter 24. I want you to look at with me verses 14 and 15 of that chapter. Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15 of that chapter. If you have it, please say amen. You'll find these similar words. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river, and in Egypt serve the Lord. Verse 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods, little g, which your father served, that were on the other side of the river, of the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But, that sanctified conjunction, but... As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Our Father and our God, Master, we thank you and we praise you for this wonderful and exciting privilege Pastor Weathersby has given to me tonight to stand in this pulpit where there's no lack of preaching, to be a part of this men's conference, God, on this family night, to share the word of God. Thank you for this pastor. Thank you for his wife. Thank you for the elders, the pastors, the ministers, the men and women of God. Thank you for all the members as well as all the guests. Thank you for the brothers who blessed us in song tonight. Thank you for the band. Thank you for all that has been said and all that has been done. Now, God, do as I ask every time I stand to preach, and that is, God, hide me behind the cross. Father, let them not see Fred, but God, let them see Christ. To the end, God, that you may be glorified, the saints of God may be edified, Satan may be horrified, and lost sinners will come to repentance. Therefore, God, stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my voice. Now be so very careful to give your name all the praise, all the glory, and all of the honor. In Jesus' name I pray and for us. Say, let the people of God say, Amen. And if it seem evil to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day. Whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. With that text in mind, with that scripture in mind, with this family night in mind, I, I want to preach tonight from the subject, putting family first. Putting family first. Leo, I don't know when it happened, bro, but it happened. I don't know how it happened, Janice, but it happened. I don't know why it happened, Bill, but I do know, Trina, that it happened. Maybe it happened because of a popular movie that was made. Or maybe it happened because of a popular television series. Or, or maybe it happened because of a popular song. Or, or maybe it started a, a Patkita on a college campus. Maybe uh, it started on a soul-searching retreat. Maybe it started on a, 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 a girls' and guys' weekend uh, a getaway. I can't tell you the year, living the word, that it happened. I can't tell you the month. That it happened, Pony. I mean, Brother Waters. I can't tell you the person, uh, uh, the uh, the the person that it. I can't even tell you the source that it happened. I, I cannot tell you who the president was. When it happened, I can't tell you who the governor was. When it happened, I can't tell you who the mayor was. When it happened, all I know, living the word, what I can tell you is that it happened. And what happened, my brothers? What happened, my sisters, elders? What happened is that is that one day the family was no longer a priority. Can't tell you the day it happened, can't tell you the year, can't tell you the month, can't tell you who the president, can't tell you the governor. But Pastor Weatherby, at one time, uh, at, some t at some point, the family Patrick, was no longer a priority. One day the family was no longer a preference. One day the family was no longer important. One day the family was no longer first. How did it happen? How could it happen? And when did it happen? Well, some say uh, uh, the family no longer was a priority when fast food became popular. Some say when uh, family no longer became, was a priority when fast food became popular, when families had options of when to eat and where to eat. Some people say that's when the family was no longer a priority. Young people, I, I know this is going to blow some of y'all away, but fast food wasn't always popular. 
I know it's going to, fast food was not always popular. Fast food was not always on every corner. Fast food was not always an everyday option. Burger King was not always an everyday stop. McDonald's was not always an everyday stop. KFC, we called it Kentucky Fried Chicken back in the day, was no longer a priority. Popeye's was no longer an everyday stop. As a matter of fact, the only time, whether it be you and I grew up in the Lord night, but the only time we went to Burger King or a McDonald's is when either dad or mama got paid on a Friday, then the whole family went on a road trip. Come on, some of y'all can identify with that. Fast food was the exception and not the rule. Maybe then that's when the family was no longer a priority. No, we did not always have fast food. Believe it or not, at one time, young people, that's going to blow you away. At one time, the entire family ate together. You got to be 60 or over to remember that. Don't raise your hand, ladies. I don't want to. But, but at one time, uh, the entire family ate together. Uh, 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 I said uh, the entire family ate together. No, it wasn't a holiday. It, it wasn't Easter. It, it wasn't Thanksgiving. It wasn't Christmas. Uh, it wasn't New Year's Day. It was something that the family did uh, every day. Some of y'all remember when the family ate together. In the morning, we ate together. And every day, I don't know how it was in your area of the city, but every day in the lower night ward at 2237 Desilon, everybody in the family was eating cornflakes. Everybody ate cornflakes. No Fruit Loops, cornflakes. No Cheerios, cornflakes. No Cinnamon Apple Crunch, Cornflakes, uh, no Apple Jacks, uh, Cornflakes, uh, no Cocoa Krispies, Cornflakes, no Raisin Bran. Everybody in the family at my house ate Cornflakes. And maybe on payday, a uh, mama got some frosted Cornflakes. Come on, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. They're about Tony the Tiger. It's great. Yes, it was. And then after school, after school for dinner, Everybody in the family ate together. Come on, some of y'all remember, and I don't know what you had at your house, but at 2237 Desert Street and in the house where I live in, uh, my mom was a single parent, we raised five of us, I'm the middle of five, uh, had two uh, older brothers and sisters, had a younger brother and sister, and everybody in the family, we knew what our dinner meal was going to be every day. On Monday, it was red beans and rice. On Tuesdays, it was pork and beans and rice. Come on, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I know I'm bringing y'all, some of y'all back. Uh, on Wednesday, it was pinto beans and rice. On Thursday, it was scrambled eggs and rice. And sometimes I'm going to throw a bologna on the, come on, come on. How many of y'all have bologna? Come on, I see that hand. I, I, I see that hand. And on Friday, it was frozen fish sticks and french fries. Come on, I'm, I'm bringing some of y'all back. I'm, I'm bringing some of y'all. Y'all don't hear me. But guess what? It was good. It was good. Uh, it was good. We were all full. Everybody was happy. And there was no such thing as, I don't eat fish sticks. You never told mama that. You never told daddy. You know, I don't, well, if you didn't eat fish sticks, well, peanut butter and jelly sandwich was what your meal was. Some of y'all remember, and for a snack, if things were really good, we have crackers and Vienna sausage. Come on, some of y'all. How many of y'all remember crackers and Vienna sausages? Don't knock it till you try it. Don't knock it till you try it. But then fast food became popular, and the family eating together was no longer a priority. The family eating together was no longer important. Uh, but not only fast food, there are other things, I believe, pastors, uh, uh, that competed with the family structure. When all the kids started getting their own room, all the children, all the kids started getting their own room, uh, it competed with the family structure. Uh, 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 was no, when I grew up, there was no such thing as your own room. It was five of us and two rooms. Mama had the bedroom, one, uh, and all the five of us, we had the, there were two bunk beds. How I many of y'all remember bunk beds back in the day? Bunk bed, uh, pallet, and, and guess what? There was one bathroom. And guess what? Nobody was late for school with one bathroom. 
Uh, it, it was the way the family did. When kids started getting their own room and their own TVs and their own video games uh, in their own room, when kids started getting their own telephone, uh, their own computer in their own room, the Internet uh, and social media, I heard my brother tonight. I wish I was here earlier, brother. Hear the rest of your uh, 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 story breakout session. But when kids started getting their own room, their own telephones, their own Internet, their own computer, when we started having microwave ovens so that everybody can eat whenever they wanted to eat in their own room the family structure was affected but not only fast food not only the family structure uh, was affected uh, but also the family structure was affected when cable tv came on the scene when cable tv came on the scene it affected the family structure those of us who are 60 years old, but we didn't have cable, we had able. Whatever we was able to get. And it was only three channels, ABC, NBC, and CBS. And if the TV would go bad, uh, uh, the antenna would go bad, you, get the, you, you go to the closet, get that hanger. Come on, y'all. Come on, you, you ain't been having those uh, big time. You got in the hangar and put that hangar and remote control. That was the youngest kid. Boy, go change that channel. God. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. The, 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 when cable TV came on the scene, it affected the whole family. There was no such thing as 24-hour TV. And after Johnny Carson, the Star Spangled Banner came on. And that wavy flag was on the screen. And after the Star Spangled Banner, shh, your TV was off. Ain't no such thing. I want to watch something else. It affected the family structure. The popularity of stations like ESPN and, and BET and music videos uh, and hip hoppers and rap artists uh, that influence our kids to challenge the rules and regulations that mom and dad had laid down at home competed with the family structure. But lest we thank you just the kids, some parents have not made the family a priority either. Too many parents, uh, 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 too many, many parents, there, there are people that competed for your time uh, uh, with your family. Too many parents, there are people that you hung out with uh, that competed for the time that you used to spend uh, with your family. Now casinos compete with your family time. Harris compete with your Family time. I know y'all don't have one here. I know y'all voted one down, but but, but y'all come to New Orleans and y'all go to uh, uh, Harrison and Treasure Chest and, and Boomtown uh, and uh, y'all go to Biloxi for Beau Ravage and, and not too far, Silver Slipper, just not too far. And, and we'll go, come, I know somebody told me about these things. I know about. And even adults, we were affected because we replaced other things uh, with things uh, in the family. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, and we wonder why there's a problem in the families. But not just the casinos, there are other things that also in competition for our time with the family. Shopping malls, Lord have mercy, are in competition with the family. In fact, when Ben and I grew up, we had to take a bus from the Lord Night Ward and go all the way to Canal Street if we wanted to shop. There's no such thing as a mall. But no, sir, we, we, we went all the way from the Lord now, catch that, that Barrett bus, catch that St. Claude bus, and everybody from now, well, so we saw each other on Canal Street at Cross and, at Cross and Maison Blanche and Gachos and all the stores like that. Uh, uh, it competed with the family time. Shopping malls are in competition with the family. Happy hour is in competition with the family. Sisters, your sugar daddy. In competition with the family behind. Now don't laugh, brothers, your side chick. This is family night, isn't it? It's in competition with the family. Your fraternities, brothers, are in competition with the family. Ladies, your sororities are in competition with the family. Our Masonic orders. Eastern Star and all those things and, and Masons are in competition. Uh, with the family structure, husband, your boys, uh, ladies, your girls, all of those things are now in competition with the family structure. 
And while we are so busy doing other things, the devil is destroying our family as God intended. While we get involved in all these other things, the enemy is very successful in destroying our families. The devil is destroying the family as God intended. The devil is destroying the family as God designed. That's why we must change our game plan. That we got to change our game plan. That's why we must change our mindset. We must change our strategies. We must change our way of living. We must change our approach. We must change our methods. In other words, brothers and sisters of Living the Word International, we must make a conscious decision to put our families first. We must make a conscious choice to put your family to church. And that's why Pastor Weathersby and Pastor Weathersby has called this conference together uh, not only to deal with the issues of the men, uh, but deal with the issues of the family. We got to put our family first. That's what Joshua did in our text. Here in our text, Joshua chapter 24, Joshua made a decision, brothers. Ladies, Joshua made a decision. I'm going to put... My family first. In our text, Joshua was concerned to see his friends uh, drifting away from God. Joshua was concerned to see his partners drifting away from God. Joshua was concerned to see his boys drifting. Joshua was concerned to see his hanging buddies drifting away from God. And it got to a point where not only his friends, but his friends' families were also being affected their wives were being affected. Their sons were being affected. Their daughters were being affected. Their families were being affected. And at the risk, brothers, at the risk, ladies, of losing their friendship, at the risk of losing their fellowship, at the risk of losing their kinship, Joshua called his partners together one day and in essence said, guys, we got to talk. He said, brother, we got to talk. I, I, I can't do this any longer. I love y'all, but, but I can't do this no more. You know, we, we've been homeless for a while, guys, but I can't do this anymore. I, I can't continue to go on like this. Guys, I love you, but there's something I got to say to each and every one of you. In other words, brothers, I don't know about you. He said, I don't know what you plan to do, but Joshua say, guys, from this day forward, I'm going to start putting my family first. These were his partners. These were his friends. These were his hanging buddies. These were his ace boon coon. Let's just say ace boon coon. I know we said that in Lord Night War. And at the risk of losing their friendship, at the, key, at the risk of using their fellowship, they, Joshua drew a line in the sand. He said, guys, starting today, I'm putting my family first. I'm put, drawing the line of starting today. I'm making my, pro, my family a priority. Starting today, I'm getting my family right. As for me, can't speak for any of y'all, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what this pastor and this pastor is saying to the membership and living the word international. That's why we call the this family conference. Uh, I know it's men conference, but but the enemy is attacking the families, so we want to kick off the night dealing with the families and, and, and guys and ladies, brothers and sisters, as we focus on the family tonight, I would like to draw a line in the carpet of living the word international and challenge every last one of us in here. Those on my left, those on my right, those in the front, those in the back. I would like to be able to draw a line in the sand and challenge everyone that's here tonight, every couple, every husband, every wife, every single parent, every uncle, every aunt, every grandparent, every guardian, every single person. I encourage you tonight. I challenge you tonight. I dare you tonight to put your family first. Make your family a priority. Get your family right. Not next week. Not, not next month, not Father's Day, guys, where we are come here on Father's Day. All right, I'm going to be a man. No, no, not one way to Father's Day. Starting tonight, get your family right. Starting to run tonight, put your family first. So the question of the hour, Pastor Weathersby, how do we do it? 
uh, on this night that we celebrate families, on this uh, weekend that we celebrate uh, a men's ministry, how do we change what we've been doing and start putting our family first? How do we tonight make a decision like Joshua did, draw a line in the sand and put our family first? Well, Joshua tells us three things in the text. If you want to get your family right, if you want to make your family a priority, Joshua said the first thing you must do, number one, there must be a commitment to your Christ. There must be a commitment to your Christ. Look at verse 15. Joshua says, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will, here it is, serve the Lord. Joshua says at the end of verse 15, guys, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Uh, don't miss that, brothers. Don't miss that, sisters. Dads, don't miss that. Husbands, uh, don't miss that. That, that, that. Don't miss that. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Not that we might. Not that it's a possibility. We will serve uh, the Lord. Listen, guys, to Joshua's commitment to God. Listen, ladies, to Joshua's commitment to Christ. Y'all can go and serve where y'all want to serve. Y'all go and serve the little G's of your life, the little gods uh, you want to serve, which your father served uh, on the other side of the flood. But, there's that sanctified conjunction, but as for me and my house, guys, I'm looking y'all in the eyes. I'm looking y'all in the face. I know we hung out together. I know we had some good time together. But, guys, y'all getting in some stuff, man, that, that I can't go along with anymore. So I'm drawing a line in the sand, and Joshua looked at him and said, I can't tell y'all what to do. I can't tell y'all what not to do. But starting tonight, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And like man of my brothers and my sisters, if we're going to put our family first, we must make a commitment to God. We must make a commitment to God. Brothers and sisters, the family is important to God. As a matter of fact, the family was so important to God that God created the family before he created the church. Think about that. The family is so important to God. Living in the world that God created the family before he created the church. Think about it, Pastor Weatherby uh, mentioned this. Earlier. The family was created in Genesis chapter 2. God created the family in Genesis chapter. The church was not created until Acts chapter 2. God put family first. Let me say that again. God put family first because God knew the importance of family. However, my brothers and my sisters, you cannot do it without a commitment to Christ. You can't make your family without a commitment to Christ. Men, ladies, couples, singles, uh, you cannot do this without a commitment to Christ. That was the problem with Joshua's friends. Uh, they were putting everything uh, and everybody before their relationship with Christ. Listen, my friend, in order to put your family first, you must. It's necessary. It's critical. It's crucial. You must have a relationship with Christ. You cannot do this on your own. That's why in Genesis chapter 2, before Adam ever met Eve, he first knew God. Before Adam was ever introduced to Eve, he first knew God. Because God said in Genesis chapter 2 that, 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 that God created Adam and put Adam in the God uh, uh, of Eden. He said, Adam, uh, uh, take care of the God. Uh, uh, take care of Adam. See that tree over there? Adam and there. God created Adam first in his life, and God created Adam, uh, uh, be, uh, he knew God before he ever knew Eve, and before Eve knew Adam, she first knew God. Come on, y'all know the Bible. The Bible said God created Eve uh, uh, from a rib in, Adam, in Adam's side. And then God put things on Eve that Adam had never saw. So like God put hips, lips, and fingertips on Eve. And God said, Eve, I got somebody I want you to meet. And God brought Eve to Adam. Before Adam ever knew Eve, he first knew God. And not before Eve ever meets Adam, she first knew God. Both of them knew God before they ever knew each other. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you cannot be the man or the husband. You cannot be the woman or the wife that God wants you to be without a relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, you must have a commitment to Christ. Not are you baptized, but do you know Jesus? 
Not that you're singing the praise team, but do you know Jesus? Not that you're a part of the church or your name is on the road. Do you know who Jesus is? Not are you a preacher, an elder, a leader in the church. Do you know who Jesus is? My friend, if you want to put family first, you must make a commitment to Christ. But then there's a second thing that Joshua tells us in the text. Not only must be a, there be a commitment to your Christ if you're going to put family first, but secondly, there must be a commitment to your companion. There must be a commitment to your companion. There must be a commitment to your spouse, not somebody you're living with, not somebody you're shacking up with. Now, now someone you are married to, you've got to have a commitment to your companion. Look again to Joshua in verse 15. Joshua say, but as for me and my house, as for me and sister Joshua, we will serve. I don't see anywhere in here where he had, had to go and get uh, sister Joshua's permission for the family to serve God. He was the leader of his house. And God's, God expect us to be the priest, the protector, and the provider of our families. God gave us that assignment. And I've been in this thing long enough that I'm uh, convinced that God would never give us an assignment and not equip us to pull it off. God would never give us an assignment. God said, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. God wouldn't have told us to do that and not put in us what we need to love our wives. Ladies, the Bible says, wives, respect and honor your husbands as unto the Lord. God would not tell you that, ladies, if he didn't put it in you what you need to pull that off. God told Adam, you are the priest, the protector, and the provider of your family. And you are responsible for your family. My friend, if you're going to put family first, everyone should know. Here it is. Everyone, brothers, if you're going to put your family first, Everyone in living the word, everyone in this church should know who you're in love with. Everybody in this church should know who you are in love with. There's some of y'all that people don't even know you're married. Because they never see y'all together. The husband comes in one car, the wife comes in another car. He's sitting over here, she's sitting over there. There's some folk, people never know that, that, that you're married because they never see you with your spouse. That's why, Pastor, well, every now and then I tell our social ministers, listen, that don't see, don't, don't, y'all don't have to sit on the front row every, every day, every Sunday. Some Sundays, go sit in the back with your wife. Go sit on this side with your family. Go, go sit with your sons and daughters. You don't have to sit on the front row. Let people know who you're in love with. Let people know who your wife and your family is. Let people know who you are. That's why I've made a conscious decision. When I became pastor of Franklin Avenue Baptist Church 36 years ago, that everybody who came to Franklin Avenue Baptist Church, everybody who became a member of the church where I pastor knew who I was in love with. The thing I was impressed tonight, the first time here for a sermon, but I was so impressed tonight. Pastor Weathersby went up to make his announcement. Guess who was with him? His wife was with him. Now, a lot of guests, y'all thought she was his daughter. He was, she was his daughter. No, that's his wife. But when he went up here to make announcements, he was holding the hand of his wife. So when guests come, they say, who's that? That's his wife. People need to know who you are in love with. That's how the enemy has been destroying families in our churches. I tell people all over America, ain't no woman like the one I got. Sometimes we have so many guests packed in the church, and, and I said, "Wow, there's a lot of guests in here. I said, baby, stand up. I want y'all to see who I'm in love with. People need to know that you're married. They need to know who you are in love with. Now, we have conflict just like every other couple. We're not perfect, uh, uh, but, but like the songwriters, our good days, I wear our bad days. I'm committed to her. She's committed to me. We're committed to our God. We are equally yoked, and we're committed to our marriage for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health, until death do us part. She loves me. I love her. 
And I told her one day on one of our mad, on our bad mad days, she said, "Boy, I'm leaving." I said, "Girl, bring me with you." Well, if you're leaving, I'm going with you. We're in this thing together, and that's biblical. Brothers and sisters, God said in Genesis 2 and 24, Therefore shall a man leave father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and the two shall become one. That's Bible, Genesis 2 and 4. Therefore shall a man leave father and mother and cleave unto his wife. But we, we reversed it today. We cleave, then we leave. God said, therefore, some man, leave father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we are one when we become married to our spouse. That is, let your daughter go. She's married now. Mamas, I know he was a mama's boy, but let him go. He's married now. Brother, stop comparing your wife to your mama. She's not your mama. Lady, stop comparing your husband to your daddy. He's not your daddy. He may not do everything like your daddy did, but he's your husband, not your daddy. She's your wife, not your mama. That's why in-laws become outlaws. Your spouse is your number one priority after God. Yes, it takes work. Yes, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, yes, it takes a commitment, but it is worth it. You got to work at it. You got to work at it. You got to work at it. That's what Joshua did in the text. That's why Joshua did not have a problem with casting off his buddies, with cutting off his partners, with cutting off his buddies, because Joshua's commitment was to his family first. And finally, if you're going to put family first, if you're going to make your family a priority, number one, there must be a commitment to your Christ. Number two, there must be a commitment to your companion, your spouse. And number three, there must be a commitment to your children. If you're going to put your family first, there must be a commitment to your children. Once again, listen to Joshua's commitment in verse 15. And if it seems evil for you to serve the Lord, Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve uh, the Lord. Once again, listen, guys. Husbands, listen. Men, listen to Joshua's commitment in verse 15. As for me and my house. Listen, y'all serve who y'all want to serve. Y'all do what y'all want to do. Y'all go where y'all want to go. Fellas, partners, as from this day forward, as for me and my house, as for me and Sister Joshua, as for me and Joshua Jr., as for me and Joshua Lynn, we're going to serve the Lord. In other words, your children need to know that they are a priority in your life. I need to say that again. Your children need to know that they're a priority in your life. In other words, they need to know that you're concerned about what goes on in their lives. Think of, do you know what your son's favorite color is? Do you know what your daughter's favorite color is? Do you know what their favorite subject in school? Do you just sit down and talk to them about things that's going on? Do you know what his or her hobby is? Do you know their strengths? Do you know their weaknesses? Do you know what their love language is? Because all of us got a love language. Words of affirmation, physical touch, quality time, give acts of service. My, my, my son's love language is, is quality time. He want me and mom at everything that he does. My, my daughter's a, a, a love language is gifts. Just give her the money. Just give her the money. Dr. Keita, my, my, my daughter has a spiritual gift of shopping. She just loved to shop. But she got it, aren't she? got it from her mom. Amen. But, 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 but you need to know your children. Here's one that should get your attention. Do you know who your kid's hero is? Do you know who your kid's hero is? Do you know who your son's hero is? Is it LeBron? Is it Steph? 
Is it Alvin Kamara? Do you know who your son's hero is? Or do you know who your daughter's hero is? Years ago when my son was a teenager, a young teenager, my son loved WWF wrestling. And Pastor Weathersby, he would take his allowance, save it up, and buy pay-per-view wrestling because he loved wrestling. He'd take his money and fill it aside, and he would say, Dad, I want to have some of my friends over this week because uh, uh, the paper would be out. I said, no problem, no problem. Yeah, I'd rather them be here than somewhere else. And so they would come to the house, man, and, and they would have a good time at WDF Wrestling. And then one day I, just, I was just watching in the back and just checking out how all the noise they were making for Shawn Michaels and, and Hawk Hero and, uh, and, and uh, uh, I mean, Hawk Hogan and, uh, and uh, Stone Cold Austin and The Rock. And, and one day I just took a chance after all his friends are left. He was up in his room. I said, I said, Chip, Dad, I need to ask you something, son. I said, what's that, Dad? I said, Chip, who's your hero? And I see how you're looking at me, hollering at, you know, Hawk Hogan and, 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 and Stone Cold Steve Austin and, uh, uh, and Shawn Michaels and The Rock. I said, yeah, but which one of those are your heroes? You know, you, I see the posters in your room of all these wrestlers. I say, out of all of them you got up there, who's your hero? The pastor, my son, looked at me. He said, Dad, you my hero. I said, boy, good answer, good answer. How much you, how much you want, boy? Good answer, good answer. Pharaoh, I took a chance, bro. I wasn't sure the answer I was going to get. But I just wanted to know who my son's hero was because if it was one of those wrestlers, I had work to do as a dad. You need to know who your kids' heroes are. Listen, parents, all of our kids have needs, and it's our job as parents to know what their needs are. It may not be another video game. It may not be another pair of Michael Jordan tennis shoes. It may not be another pair of jeans. It may not be a, a cell phone. It may not be a computer. It could be something as simple as your time. It could be something as simple as taking time to hang out, to bring your daughter to lunch, bring your son to lunch, look them in the eyes and say, man, daddy loves you. Girl, daddy loves you. I wanted my, my daughter to, I wanted her to see how much I loved her mama so that one day when she decided to get married, she want to marry a man like she saw in her dad. I wanted my son, when he was ready to get married, to, to, to look at how I treated his mom, and he wanted to be a, a, a husband like his dad because I didn't have that growing up. My mom and dad were divorced when I was six years old. So I didn't have that, and I'm convinced our kids could never be what they've never seen. So we've got to train them in the things of the Lord. i got to come to a close, but let's make a decision to make our families a priority. Let's make a decision to put our family first, that our family would be first. Before the deacons meeting, our families would be first. Before the elders meeting, our family would be first. Before the preachers meeting, our families would be first. Before the choir rehearsal, before the business meeting, before the men's meeting, before the women's ministry, before the, our families would be first. Because, Pastor Weathersby, I don't know about you, we have an active prison ministry, and we've gone to every prison in the state of Louisiana. And one thing that cuts me to my heart, I'm preaching at Angola, or preaching at Hunts, or, or, or preaching at Jackson, or preaching at one of those, and after service, a young man would come up to me and say, Pastor Luda, Pastor Luda, hey, hey, man, you know my dad. I said, who's your dad? He said, Pastor so-and-so. Oh. It's a dagger. Sometimes we try to save everybody else's family. We try to go out the way for everybody else's family. But our kids are suffering. True story, when I, I was on this, you, you saw the video. As a matter of fact, let me give kudos to y'all. Multimedia department, incredible, incredible, incredible video. Man, I don't know what they're paying y'all, but y'all are earning y'all money. The videos are incredible. And I, whether it be when I was, y'all saw I was president of the Southern Baptist Convention, 
uh, 14 uh, 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 a million members, 45,000 churches uh, all across America. And this three kid from the Lord Night War was elected unopposed as president of Southern Baptist Convention. And man, I was traveling everywhere. I was, not to get you, but I, I was traveling everywhere. I'd be preaching in my pulpit on Sunday, but leaving either that Sunday night or that Monday, traveling somewhere across the country because I was president of the Southern Baptist Convention. I started going so much. And when I got home, I said, hey, y'all, I'm home. Oh, hey, Dad. I said, I'm back. Oh, hey, Dad. I was losing my family. I got so caught up in a position, so caught up in prestige, that I was losing my family. That, five, that after I turned the TV off, they were watching TV, I said, come here, y'all, let's, let's sit at the table. And I said, I want to apologize. Dad is sorry. I've got so caught up in this position of being president of 14 million members, 45,000 churches, that I was sacrificing my time with y'all. Looked at my wife, I said, baby, I apologize. Looked at my daughter, Kimberly, baby, I apologize. Looked at my son, Chip, son, I apologize for putting other people and other things in this convention before y'all. I will not make that happen again. We cried together, we held together that following Sunday. I went to the pulpit of the church where I pastored at. I said, folk, I have a confession to make. Everybody said, ooh, no, 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 no. I say, um, it, hasn't, it wasn't scheduled, it's not on my agenda, it wasn't on my calendar, but I need to take the next two weeks off. I'm, I'm losing my family. And I'm going to take the next two weeks off. I'm going to put my family first. Pastor, they, it surprised me. One by one, they got up. And they applauded. They clapped. Because they knew how important family was to me. And I had missed the mark by getting my priorities messed up. Guys, don't do what I did. They just don't do what I did. Put your family first. Put your sons first. Put your daughters first. Joshua say, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served on the other side of the foot or the gods who am right you now but dwell. But from this night forward, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So come on, brothers. Put your family first. Come on, sisters. Put your family first. Come on, preachers. Put your family first. Come on, elders. Put your family first. Come on, praise team. Put your family first. Come on, church. Put your family first. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I like the way the songwriter said, you may build great cathedrals, large or small. You may build skyscrapers, grand or tall. You may conquer all the failures of your past. But only, but only, but only what you do for Christ and your family will last. Let's put our family first. God bless y'all. I love y'all. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor, for this privilege. God bless you, and may God keep you. Then on the side. Come up, come up here, Pastor. That was such a powerful word. Profound. Here is what we're going to do. If you receive that word, and you know, I know we get caught up in serving in church and doing what feels and what we've been taught to do. But this is a life changing word that's challenging you to make a commitment. So if y'all got to get off the instruments, you got to get off that door ushering, you got to get off your security post, I want everybody in here, if you ready to make the decision that family will be first, I want you to come to this altar, and I want Pastor Luther to pray over us. So if y'all got to get off the instruments,
get off the, the, the marshal positions, the media positions, wherever you are. Come on, baby. You know, sometimes we, we're so busy doing church, you know, we say we're not going to do church, we're going to be the church. Sometimes we know we got to have the keyboards going and the guitars going and we got to make sure the camera's on the right angle. But how many of you know that your family is more important than all of that? So we want to seal this tonight. Amen. We want to seal this tonight. So find your family member. If you, your usher and your husband's in the band or vice versa, go find your spouse. Get next to your spouse. Man, if you're here by yourself, come on up here and stand in the gap for your family. And I, I'm summoning everyone in this room, if you're ready to see a difference in your house and in your family lives, there's some generational curses that's going to be broken with this prayer. See, we have a model, if you live the word, then the word will what? Live through you. We're talking about hearing a life-changing word tonight that can break the curse of the enemy, although that we are blessed and not cursed, but anything that has been pronounced on your family for generations, the only thing it takes to break it is for you to make the decision that's for me and my house. I don't care what happened before you. I don't care what happened 100 years ago. But every man in here, if you learn, is that if you live to be 80 and your son lived to be 80 and your grandson lives to be 80, would you say that they affect the next 240 years of your family? So if your hearts are ready and your hearts are open to receive, let us, let us receive as Pastor Luther Prince. Father, there's no coincidence that on this weekend that we're celebrating men and living the word international. Pastor Weathersby decided on Thursday night we want to celebrate families. God, there's no coincidence that on this weekend that we celebrate men, and this pastor realized that we also need to celebrate families. Because God, the enemy, is attacking families. Saw it back in Genesis chapter 3. When the serpent deceived Eve, and Eve ate of the fruit and gave to her husband. And ever since then, the family has been cursed. God, I know in the name of Jesus that that curse can be broken because there was a man by the name of Jesus Christ who came to set the captives free. So, God, I pray tonight for every husband. I pray for every wife. I pray for every man, for every woman. I pray for every single parent. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice who realizes what the enemy has done and what he's trying to do tonight. God, our nation is in trouble. Our city is in trouble. Our state's in trouble. Our churches are in trouble, God, because we have allowed the enemy to divide the family. God, I pray that starting tonight in this ministry at this church, we will break the curse, we will break the chain, and that we will once again be Joshua's and decide from this night forward. As for me and my house, can't speak for the one on my left, the one on my right, can't speak for the one in front of me and behind me, but as for me and my house, even for single moms who had a household, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now God, some of us got to repent. Some of us have to ask for forgiveness like I had to ask my wife's forgiveness and my son's forgiveness and my daughter's forgiveness because I allowed positions and prestige and, and title to get in the way of what you assigned me to do. 
God Franklin Avenue is your church. It's going to go on with you or with, it's going to go on with, without me, God. But, God, uh, it's, it's your church. You are responsible, Franklin Avenue. God, you're going to take care. But, God, the loot of family is my responsibility. And I needed to make a decision that I was going to lead my family. So, God, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus that even as we pray at this family conference, that chains are broken, God, that the Spirit of God is moving in every family in this place. Yes, tears may flow, God. Apologies need to happen. But, God, we declare and decree that everybody who wants to put their family first, we declare and decree that everybody who wants to make their family a priority, starting tonight at this family conference, will make that commitment, will make that charge that as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Now, Lord, they can't do it by themselves. So I'm praying that you would touch them, God, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on every man, fall fresh on every woman, fall fresh on every husband, fall fresh on every wife, God, and make us to be the men, the women, the people of God that you called us to be so we can save our families and ultimately save our church. And then after we save our families and save our church, we can save our communities and impact our cities, our state, in our nation. Because if you want to get the nation right, you got to get the state right. We want to get the state right, got to get the cities right. We want to get the city right, got to get the neighborhood right. We want to get the neighborhood right, you got to get the church right. We want to get the church right, you got to get the family right. So God, we make a commitment to be Joshua's. We make a charge to be Joshua's that from this day forward, as for me and my house, we will Serve the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And for us say, let everybody say, amen, amen, amen. God bless y'all. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Come on, let's give God praise for Pastor Luda again. Amen. If you go back to see just a couple announcements, musicians, y'all can go back. <laughs> amen. 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 Hallelujah. Me and somebody just shot that. Say, for as for me and my house. Say, me and my house, we shall, without option, serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I could go and flow, brothers. There may be one here tonight. Maybe one here tonight, and maybe if you're watching online, um, because we did stream it tonight, if you're watching online, you may be here tonight and say, well, Pastor, I want to make that commitment, but I've never really accepted Jesus Christ with my own confession, my own belief in my heart. And today, God, I need to be able to do that. But you may be sitting here saying, well, I don't know how to do that. Well, I'm going to help you. First of all, there's a very simple thing you need to do. You just need to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God who died and God raised him from the dead. If you confess that, believe that in your heart, that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved as soon as you finish confessing. There's no ifs, no, no ands, no buts about it. You will be saved as soon as you confess it. So if you're here tonight and you want to do it, if you're watching online and you want to do it and maybe you don't have the words that you, you can say or you don't know what words to say, repeat this prayer after me if you're ready to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Repeat it after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you just as I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son who died on the cross and after three days you raised him from the dead for my sins. Holy Spirit, come into my life and create in me a new heart, a clean heart, 
and a right spirit. Heavenly Father, I believe by the confession of my mouth and the belief in my heart that Jesus is Lord. I am saved. I am saved. I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you just did those two things together for the first time, because maybe before you confess that Jesus is Lord, but you didn't really believe it. Then another time, you may have wanted to believe it, but you never confessed it. But if you just confess and believe, you are now saved. What you need to do now is to pray that the Lord will plant you in a church home that's going to teach you how to grow, how to understand the love of God, the love of Christ in your life, to teach you how to walk out your own soul. Now here we would love to invite you to be a member of Living the Word. But we also believe that the greatest act of disobedience, mass disobedience, takes place every Sunday morning because people are sitting in church houses that the Lord did not send them to. So we don't, we're not trying to build a church. We're trying to build a kingdom. We're trying to advance the kingdom. So we stand in agreement that you will pray what the Lord wants you to be. Maybe it's not this church. Maybe it's the church that you grew up in. Maybe it's the church that the Lord has had you to visit. But if you just gave your life to Jesus Christ, your next step is connected to a church that will teach you about Jesus Christ, a Bible being, believe in church. Amen? There's always, I believe, I say this every Sunday, I believe that every second of the day, Holy Spirit has convicted somebody to come back to God. So maybe you are saved, but you've fallen away from God. God kept it, and he has maintained his relationship with you. It was you who stopped the fellowship with God. And you say, well, God, Pastor, how do I recommit my life? It's very simple. I'll pray for you, but you have to take ownership. You have to say, Lord, that's me. Please forgive me. Please restore me in Jesus' name. As I pray for you, you don't have to repeat a word I say, but you do have to take ownership for what you've done. And the way you do that is simply say, Lord, that's me. Please forgive me. Please restore me. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I come now, God, and I stand in a gap for each and every person, God, that you are pricking their heart, God. Holy Spirit has convicted them, God, of what they have done and what they're currently doing. But God, they love you. They believe in you. They never stop believing in you. But whatever reason, God, they were drawn away and stopped fellowshipping with you. So God, as they now repent and they come back to you, they want to be rec recommitted to you. They're taking ownership for stopping the fellowship, God. We know that you are God that is faithful and you're just, God, to forgive us when we confess our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, God, we thank you for restoring your children in this very moment. We know, God, they don't have to say a word, but you can understand the recess of their heart. You know what they're saying in their heart. You know if it's authentic or not. But God, we thank you for being a loving father you are and restoring your children back into their rightful place in the body. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. If you just took ownership of breaking the fellowship, you are now completely restored. With God, he doesn't need to ponder it. He doesn't need to think about it. He's been waiting on you to do it. So the moment you did it sincerely, it happened just like that. Amen? Now, if y'all believe like I believe that someone got saved, someone recommitted their life tonight, either in this room or all over wherever the streaming is going, then y'all put your hands together and give God some praise for salvation and restoration tonight. Now, here's what we do ask you. If you're here or even if you're watching online, you can go to www.ltwi.org. Or if you're in this room, if you gave your life to Christ, you recommitted your life. Even if you don't want to join this church or become a member of this church, we just want to be assured that you are getting the right wisdom and counsel to help you walk through your next steps. So we ask if you led by Holy Spirit to fill out the connect card. And we just we will have someone to call you as soon as tomorrow, no later than Monday, to find out what your choice is. If you're going to another church, if you're coming here, we will help you connect to the church that you want to go to. Your soul is that important to us here. So if you fill out that card either here or online, 
the ministerial staff will contact you and help you walk through your next steps. Amen? Amen. Can we give God some more praise for what he's done tonight? Amen. A couple of announcements, and we're going to be out here. A couple of announcements. Tomorrow night is the second night of the Mighty Men Conference, but tomorrow night is men only night. Let me say that again, men only night. They got a sister next to you tell them, say, I love you, but you can't come. Amen. Well, here's how we start tomorrow, brother. We start with we start with a tailgate fellowship. Um, and remember I told you if the Lord, you know we can believe the Lord here sent down stuff from heaven. But the Lord sent down some that not only we getting hamburgers and hot dogs, but the Lord has sent down some ribs for all the men down from heaven. Look, ain't nothing well just since we talk about woo woo and all that. You ain't saying nothing, no. <laughs> Y'all not saying a word, no. And here it is. If you hit the gate, wave. If you need a ride, drop him off at the gate. Don't even pass the first parking lot sign. I'm just playing with y'all. Just playing with y'all. But even if you drop him off, there are no go plates. Look at your wife. Say, don't look at my pastor like that. But now, seriously, tailgate starts at 5 o'clock tomorrow, 6 o'clock. We have in the um, breakout session um, with men. We're going to have a hot, honest, open, transparent discussion. Amen. And I know all y'all leaders like, what y'all going to talk about? What is said in men's ministry stays in men's ministry. Amen. So if you can find out if you come home, if you're a Read your body. <laughs> Amen. That's at 6 o'clock and then um, at 7.30 tomorrow night. 7.30, we're going to start the service because from 7 to 7.30, um, we're going to get Pastor Antoine Barrier, who's, who's the founder and the visionary of Men of Faith, which we all are part of. And uh, he just want to explain that to any man who wants to be a part of Men of Faith. Um, it doesn't challenge your walk with your church. It doesn't make you do anything against your church. It's just that when the Men of Faith together, if one man of faith needs us, all of the men of faith show up, regardless of where you're from, what church you're from, or whatever. Amen? So just to make sure that we all don't want to call. Men of faith sound off. Men of faith sound off. Men of faith sound off. So tomorrow, I need everybody to be in place. 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 7.30. On tomorrow. On Saturday, we're doing the family day in the park, Fritchie Park. Um, bring your own tent. We bring in everything else. Amen. We, if you can bring your portable tree, you're gonna need it. It's gonna be hot. Amen. But there are a lot of trees in the park. And first come, first serve. I'll say it again. There are a lot of trees in the park. First come, first serve. But we will have water slides, slipping slides for the kids. We got ice cream. We got freeze pops, hamburgers, red beans, fried chicken, barbecue chicken. You name it. So here it is. And it's all free. So invite somebody that you know. And let, let's let's give it up for the people at this church. You all went online and registered. And the last count we had was like 560-something people who would be attending and fellowship in the Sunday. So we praise God for that. Amen? So come on out. Remember, hydrate now. Don't wait till Saturday. Start hydrating now because it will be hot. But we have misters, we have tents for everybody who doesn't have a tent. Um, we would do everything we can to make sure that you're cool. Amen? And then on Sunday, we do Sunday service and we celebrate all of the fathers. Amen? Where the fathers at in the house? Amen? Uh, let me hear you again. Where the fathers at? All right, right here, right here. One more time. Where the fathers at? Amen. Remember what he said tonight. Remember what he said tonight. You show up at your house and this is a man in the house. I ain't hear you. Where was the right here, right here? Amen. So saying that, standing on your feet. Is there anything else I need to talk about tonight? That's it? Anything else, Elder Corey? All right, tomorrow night, men, we are in uniform. We are in uniform. Tops and bottoms, sleeves up. Tops and bottoms, sleeves up. We're in uniform tomorrow. Man, hold your right hand in here. Repeat after me. Much prayer. 
much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. Find three or four people, tell them, say, my house shall serve the Lord. Tell them, say, my house shall serve the Lord. God bless you all. See you, brother, see you tomorrow. Later, see you on Saturday.